Something tells me you're ready to go see Thor Ragnarok. Maybe a little bit. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learn you some filmmaking and learn you good. Now we had our Thor Lightning Ice Effect episode last week, and I did say we were going to follow that up with a Thor Lightning Effect this week, and lo and behold, that's what we're doing. It's really not that surprising. So in order to complete this effect, you can do nothing, because I'm going to teach you how to build the lightning, or you can head to filmlearning.com slash downloads and download the lightning pack that I've made available for you. Now that you've got all that, let's get to work. Okay guys, here we are in After Effects 2018, and I've got my shot set up in a comp and ready to go. Now you may notice that I've already added our Thor Lightning Ice effect from last week, because this is a long one, and I'm not making it any longer. And hey, if you are interested in that effect, by all means click on the card in the top right corner, and or you can just wait to the end screen. That's probably better. Now, even though I have several examples of lightning in the download pack, I did say last week that I would show you how to build the lightning, and so I shall. Now, you may be surprised that we don't use Sabre and we don't use advanced lightning at all. So, how about we open up a full HD comp, around about two seconds in length, and let's get started. And I'm gonna take that lack of interaction from you because this is a video and I'm recording it as a yes. So let's open up a comp and name it, say, lightning. Hmm, seems apt. And the first thing we're gonna do is grab the pen tool and create a new shape layer. Now before we draw a shape, let's set up our settings. Now firstly, we don't wanna fill, so let's turn that off like so. Secondly, we want our stroke to be a white or say a light blue, whatever floats your boat. I'm gonna go with white. Let's then set the stroke size to two. Now if you want your lighting to be a bit thicker, you can always increase this size. From there, and if we look at an example, much of Thor's lightning is curved, and if you look closely, it also flows in one direction like it's passing through the God of Thunder. And getting curved lightning, that flows isn't easy using lightning in After Effects. But with a shape layer, it's as simple as drawing a rough curve. Like this, and then just adding a few extras. Now I know what you're thinking, that looks stupid and I'm a terrible person. But stick with me, you naysayers. Now let's head up, grab a new adjustment layer, stay up, and head to Effect, Distort, and add us a Turbulent Displace. And of course, we're gonna tweak some settings. Firstly, we'll set the amount to 90, and the size to 3. And then we'll set the anti-aliasing to high. Next, grab the Offset Turbulence, and take it to the start of your lightning, say here. And then we're gonna hit the stopwatch, head to the end of the comp, and then drag it to the other end of the lightning. The offset, that is. Now, if we check out a preview, you can see our shape layer not only is starting to look a bit more like lightning, but it looks like it's flowing in a direction, like it's going through something or someone. Pretty neat, huh? So, we've made it flow. Time to warp it and give it a little bit more of a lightning feel. For starters, let's head over to presets and apply our good friend Lightsaber Glow V2 from Video Copilot. There'll be a link down in the description so you can download that and throw it into your presets folder. The only change I made here is changing the color from more of a blue to a pale blue. But feel free and have a play and apply whatever color you like. From there, let's add one more adjustment layer. There we go. And then we're gonna add one more turbulent displays. This time we're gonna set the size to 50, the anti-aliasing to high, and then, of course, we're going to hit the stopwatch on Turbulent Offset, move the target over to the start of the lightning, like so, and, shock horror, I know, we're going to head over to the end of the comp and move that offset to the other side. If we check out a preview now, it looks like we have a lightning that has an electrical current flowing through it, and it behaves randomly wavy like lightning. Now, the beautiful thing is, you've just built the base of your lightning. You can just now delete that shape layer and draw whatever shape you like and it'll behave the exact same way. You can do as many lightning comps as you like. Last step in our lightning and it's a really easy one too. The lightning needs to burst out for a frame or two. So here's how we do that. Let's head up, grab the rectangle tool and make sure you click this here. Tool creates mask as this is how you draw a mask on a shape layer. So let's draw a mask roughly over a quarter of our line like so. We'll then hit F and feather it out around 50 pixels. You can see that sort of has a little wispy end now. Let's then hit M and hit the stopwatch on mask path. Let's go forward say one to two frames and then extend that rectangle mask so that it reveals the entire lightning layer. Now if we check out a preview, you can see our lightning bursts out before becoming its full shape. 
And that, my friends, is how you build a single Thor lightning burst. Now, you can render these out individually if you like, or just keep them as comps. I personally rendered them out to make the final shot easier to work with. So, here are my render settings. Firstly, let's add our burst to the render queue. And then, I'm going to click on Lossless, head to QuickTime, and then I'm going to set the compression on by QuickTime to Animation. And finally, I'm going to set the channels to RGB plus Alpha. And hit Render. Done. All we have to do now is just import them back in. Right, now I've showed you how to build them from scratch. Now let's composite these ones that I've already made. Now the process is pretty easy, gang, but it does take some patience because it takes a little bit of time. The basic idea is that these lightnings are going to be all over your actor's body for the length of the shot. Now to give you a for instance, the example shot that I put at the start of the episode goes for 2 seconds and it has 21 different lightning clips scattered throughout it, and I still don't think that's enough. But it is what it is, so let's have a crack at that. I've already imported all my lightning shots into the project window, so let's grab one, this one will do, then we're going to drop that into the comp, then of course we'll change the transfer mode to add and position it into place. Now to make the lightning pop just a little bit more, I would suggest hitting Ctrl D to duplicate it, changing the transfer mode on the top layer to screen, and then we'll follow that up by heading to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and grabbing Fast Box Blur. Hit Repeat Edge Pixels, and then crank that up to around 20. Much better. From there, just keep dropping those lightning layers in and positioning them into place and follow the exact same steps. If you need to add some variants, you can scale them up or down, or maybe rotate them. As you can see from the project window, I've only got six different lightning bursts here. So to make them different, you just have to get a little bit creative. That, or just make more of them, I guess. But once you've done all that, you should have something that looks like this. It looks pretty good, but if we go back to our example, you can see there's a hot spot almost like on every flare where the lightning makes contact with Thor's body. So in order to make that, we need a flare. So in the download folder, you'll see that we have ourselves a flare file. So all we're going to do is just drop this flare into our comp, change the transfer mode to screen, and then we're going to position it on the edge of our lightning, right here. We'll then head to the end of the burst and trim off the excess. We're then going to repeat that process. In my case, I'm just going to duplicate the flare, and then I'm going to trim those initial flames until our lightning is complete, and then we'll start our second flare on the other edge, right here. So on the initial burst of the lightning, you've got one flare, and then when it completes the animation that we put in there, we'll then add our second flare. And then of course, head to the end of the animation and then just trim the excess off that second flare as well. Now just be aware that if your lightning does move at the edges because of the turbulent displacement, you may have to animate the position of your flare to follow the edge of the lightning as well. So just be aware that may actually happen with your lightning. Now comes the fun! We have to repeat that flare process for every single lightning strike in your comp. See what I mean when I said it takes some patience? Now something you can do to add some variance in these flares as well is just to increase the scale on one or two of them. Or if you are so inclined, you can make your own flares. And once this is all done guys, it'll look like this. So the effect is almost done. We just have one more important thing to do. And it's a subtle effect, but it's still important. And that's adding some light fall off from your lightning to your actor's face and clothing. So let's start with our face right here. Let's head up, grab a new adjustment layer, grab the pen tool, and draw a rough mask around this part of the face right here. We'll then head up to Effect, Color Correction, and add Exposure. Then we're going to stay up there and add Photo Filter. From the menu, let's grab the custom color, grab the eyedropper, and choose a light blue from our lightning glow, like so. We'll then increase the exposure so that it stands out a little. Nice. Next, let's hit F and feather out that mask so it doesn't look so damn obvious. Much better. From there, we're going to hit T and bring up our opacity settings and crank that thing down to zero. We'll then hit the stopwatch and then scrub through the timeline until the lightning comes near our actor's face. We'll then step back a frame, add a keyframe, step forward that one frame where our lightning is actually near the face and increase the opacity to around 100%. We can then scrub forward again until the lightning is gone and add a keyframe on the last frame of our lightning. 
right here. And then we're gonna move forward once again and we'll crank that opacity back down to zero. If we just check out a quick preview, you can see that when the lightning's near our face, we get this highlight of light fall off on our face and then when the lightning goes away, it goes away as well. Now you can go absolutely nuts here and add as many of these things as you like, gang. If I skip ahead, you can see I've added one to the other side of the face, one on my head, and even one over here on the arcade machine. If we check out a preview, you can see that all of these parts working together really help sell the effect of the lightning being in the scene. And that, my friends, is another effect. Duh. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. Something tells me you're ready to go see Thor Ragnarok. Maybe a little bit. So guys, that is my take on the Thor lightning effect from Thor Ragnarok. Now, as you can see, there is a lot of variations you can do with this lightning since you can totally customize it. So play with the turbulent displace, play with the shape layer, play with the thickness, play with the glow, play with everything until you find something that you're happy with. And then just composite it all together and it'll look cool. And just in case anyone's interested, I've actually got Marvel superheroes versus Street Fighter playing on the arcade in the background. Easter eggs. We have so many cool new movies coming out and so many more effects to do. It's just like it's a total brrrr. So in the meantime, why not just hit over here. We've got our Thor title episode right here and we've got our Thor lightning episode if you haven't missed that right here. My social media stuff is above my head. We've got the Twitter, we've got the Facebook. I post all the time, work in progress, all that sort of stuff. So just check them out. And until next time, guys, keep learning.